Hello, welcome to part three of a little series on our calling from the Diocesan Vocations team, where we're particularly following this book, some of the thoughts and the characters from the Bible that come from it. And I'm going to begin, we're getting lots of uh, board games out in our house. Do you recognise this sound, which comes from a particular board game? I'm spinning something. You may never have played it. It might be something that your parents might have had. It's the game of life. And here's the spinner. And depending on what happens in the game, you go around the board. You can get lots of children. You can buy a yacht. You can go shark hunting. But generally, because it's all about chance, you usually end up declared destitute and living on your own. While other people become a millionaire tycoon. Life changes quick in this game. The character that we're thinking about today is Moses and if you were to look at Moses' life there's so many twists and turns to what happens to him and then at one point he has this calling when he is no longer the Hebrew boy on his own in the Egyptian culture. He is no longer the person who is trying to understand well I am Hebrew but here I am in a different place. He's no longer the shepherd who's escaped onto the mountains. Uh, he's been called by God. And it's interesting to imagine that the narrative, the story that we read, seems to feel that this comes a little bit more out of the blue when the bush is burning. But if we were to chat to Moses, I wonder if he might have actually said, no, as soon as I was uh, able to understand what was going on. There was like this interior part of my life where I knew something was going to be different. Well, in this video today, we're thinking about what does it mean when we consider not just what I feel about what God is calling me to, but the bigger picture. And this is really well summarised in a part of the book where it talks about Moses. The call of Moses will bear fruit beyond anything he could have imagined, but its fullest flowering will take place when he's no longer there to see it. In one of the most moving passages in the Bible, Moses climbs to the top of Mount Pisgah, where God shows him the promised land that his people will enter, but Moses doesn't live to go there with him. Moses begins to understand that life is much bigger than his own context. And what's marvellous for, for us, uh, for the, the Hebrew people who came after him, the Jewish tradition and the Christian tradition, is that in Moses' personal calling, we begin to know a lot more about God in his connection with him. At the minute, the uh, crisis that we're in is stirring up lots of callings from people who I'm talking to. Um, in two videos ago, we thought about Esther and there was a catalyst for her that things began to put into place. And at the moment, the, the effect of the virus in our society is having a, an effect on our calling as well. So there's one person I know who started doing little videos uh, in his parish church. It is not something he would normally do, but he feels a calling to do this which is good because you don't then just see the face of a, a clergy person, but you, you see the face of a, a local villager who the other people in the village know and understand. I've got a friend who uh, has been uh, isolating in a residential care home because she felt that was a call that God was asking her to do at that point, a temporary position to be alongside the residents while everything goes into lockdown. I've got other friends who were part of the medical team who are feeling that they need to go back in on the front line because that's something inside of them as well where God is saying, I want this for you. There's catalysts at the moment which are going on which are helping people to realise it's normal part of our discipleship to hear God and to follow. But Moses, as we're thinking of today, does offer us a few more insights because calling is not really just me, me, me finding out what I am up to. It really is this dynamic expression of our context where 
we're understanding more about God and grappling with that. There's no one perhaps who, who grapples more than Moses in his reluctance to do things. And part of that calling is going deeper in our connection together. Yes, it's about me, but it's also about discovering more about who God is. Listen to this little part, which talks about the, uh, the bush that is burning. The presence of God in the midst of the everyday is objective. It's not merely a projection of Moses' experience or hopes. It is attractive. It draws, yet does not compel. It's personal. God calls him by name. But more than this, it's life-changing. Note, at the beginning, Moses said, here I am, chapter 3, verse 4 of Exodus. But the here I am, very quickly in the conversation with God, became, well, who am I? As Moses begins to back away, once he's heard what God has had in store for him. And here's a comment. Christian vocation is never simply or even primarily the fulfilment of our psychological gifts or potential, but a radical unselfing that demands of us not just a complete change of life, but also a complete rethinking of, well, just who we are. Now that might seem a little bit grand. It might seem that we're only talking about like huge callings. But in a way we can translate this to much more down to earth parts of our Christian life where we're just hearing what God is saying to us. One of the words I hear a lot in church these days, and I've not really heard it uh, for a while, is the word deploy. We're going to deploy our clergy. We want to deploy our laity. We want to deploy our chaplains. We want to deploy our leaders. Um, there's nothing wrong with using that word deploy, but to look at another game of chess, then it might feel that we are um, in the hands of somebody who's playing and deploying people in a, an unthoughtful way or in an unfamiliar way. Chess pieces are put in one place and then moved around in order to get to a particular point. But the, the chess piece has no connection to the person who's playing the game. The chess piece is merely uh, a function to get something done. We never get that impression with God that God is just moving people around and deploying people in some kind of uh, great, magnificent uh, overture of life to fulfil his picture. Everything is about connection in terms of our relationship and something where we are important to him and personally. And perhaps in Moses we see this really supremely because through Moses so much of the early understanding of who God is comes. When we think about the ups and downs that Moses has in understanding who he is and understanding who God is, then we have a, a clear insight for wherever we are in our life that God, when God is calling us, is going to go into somewhere which is new, somewhere which is different. There are loads of exterior pressures on Moses from uh, his uh, family, from Pharaoh, from the Hebrews, from the Egyptians, from invaders. Everything seemed to come against him. It's worth thinking though, what was going on interiorly for him in, in his prayer life? What was going on in his self-understanding? And did he really pick up that idea that there was a bigger, bigger, bigger picture to life than just himself? The chapter that we are looking at on Moses ends with a quote, and it's a quote about the the man who uh, well ended up as a Trappist monk, a mystic writer, Thomas Merton, and somebody's commenting on his life. He saw his whole life as a calling from God, and one he was bound to answer faithfully. The calling did not make him, 
It was how he answered it that mattered. He tried to answer it with all he had. So thinking today about vacation, calling, what God is up to in our life, Moses was drawn into this bigger, bigger picture. And Moses is a brilliant example of how God connects to us individually, personally, and how we're able to just be alert that he is the loving one in whom our whole world exists. We began to think about the catalyst for why we think about calling. We carried on to think about planting seeds for us. So this is a good thing, always to be looking, always to be alert, always to be listening like uh, Samuel and today's Moses. Thank you.